Hi, everybody. It's Nikki, um, and I am doing a video that is my personal experience, my own personal madness, and not to be used as medical advice um, in the least. And um, I'm doing this one today because, um, there's my timer, got it. Um, I'm doing this one today because I feel like I've been to the heart of darkness and maybe have begun the trek back. I don't, it's been a really crazy couple of days. Um, and what's funny is the light at the end of the tunnel is that all of this calibration factor and ISIG stuff is very real. Um, it is not magic. It is not a mystery. And it's not something that has not been discovered. In fact, it is what <laughs> our sensors and now our 670G run off of. Um, the, it, the ISIG is your interstitial signal and it is what gives, what provides the raw data for which these things are able to run. Um, it's also why auto mode in all of its best intentions is um, average at best for some. I understand, trust me, I get it, that this is not gonna be true for everybody. For me, it's maddening. Um, and now I understand why because over the last couple of days, I didn't know what these things were. I, I started with a number and I began to use that number and somehow that number grew into information and I was doing all this stuff and it was seriously, it was maddening. Um, but there was too much of a pattern to, to deny that there was something to it. So over the last couple, I mean, what I finally, what I finally realized a couple of days ago that the ISIG and the calibration factor it's not rate and movement or rate and direction um, because that is very confusing. I'm like, it's volume. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, for some reason this makes me think this is volume. And then I was watching that and I decided to start to look up interstitial ISIG. I looked up ISIG because I was looking up ISIG te technology to see what there was. And there are, there are, there's 20 years of literature on your interstitial fluid. Um, and whether or not there's predictability between that and your blood glucose. And now I understand that interstitial fluid, it's why I've heard it since I heard it for 15 years, you know, be careful that what you get is your blood and not your interstitial fluid. But I didn't know why. And I've heard of ISIG and I've heard of calibration factor, but I never knew why. And now it's all come together. And now I have a really good grasp and I'm hoping that moving forward, there are some things I can answer for myself. The reason my instinct was that this would be helpful information for lots of people, because I really did think that, is because lots of people are using it. <laughs> you are probably, if you're watching this video, because you probably have a pump and you probably have a sensor. Um, the meters, I mean, all of these things. So it, this, is, this is nothing new, this is nothing magic, this is not undiscovered or uncharted territory. This has been well-documented, and for a long time they've been trying to figure out whether what the predictability is and, and, and how to avoid the delay and it's all, you know, um, it's all good information for me as a diabetic at this point. Um, that's the way I feel. And I feel like it's really helpful information. And I feel like there was a really big deal that I came across before, before finding the reading. Um, and that is, I realized a couple of days ago that I am auto. I am doing what auto is attempting to do. But then I realized I'm doing it faster because I have a calculator and a current BG. And now I understand that that delay, they know they know about the delay. Um, they can't get past the delay right now. They're trying to shorten the delay or whatever. But the faster your blood sugar moves, the more that delay leads to a really big, um, I mean, problem. I want to say problem because that's the way it feels to me. You know, it's, um, it's a flawed product when there's movement. And what's funny is when I'm sitting here, I'm calculating away, I'm testing away, I'm doing all this stuff. And every time my blood sugar really starts to move, it just gets so hard. Even looking at the calibration factor, it gets so hard. And I'm like, that's why auto has a hard time. It's because it's moving really quickly and because there's fluctuations um, and because it's a concentration and sometimes your, your interstitial fluid has more glucose and sometimes it has less. And it's gonna depend on what your BG is, and it's gonna depend on what's happening in your environment. If you're running, if you're sitting, if you're eating a ho-ho, if you're stressed out. Um, it's all so freaking crazy, and that's what diabetes is. It's all so freaking crazy.
Um, and it's all, it's been dark for a couple of days and for, but I've learned some interesting things over the last couple of days. Um, one is that my auto mode does crazy stuff. Um, and it does stuff behind the scenes. And I realize I'm continuing to try to figure out how to use my calibration factor. Cause I still think that there is a really good thing because I have current numbers and my SG and my pump doesn't, um, so I'm still going to continue using it, um, but I can't try to use that and be an auto. It's like we're both trying to do the same thing, and so we're messing each other up. Something awful. I want to, you know, I hate you. <laughs> I hate you with all my heart, auto. I thought I liked you, but, you know, I don't. Um, I also realized that I hate manual because manual is just full, unapologetic, insulin all the time, no matter what. And I like the idea that auto at least is trying to help me. It just sucks at helping me. <laughs> um, I hate you diabetes with all my heart. I hate you diabetes. Okay. Um, and now we're moving on because that doesn't matter. You're all mine anyway. So, um, I have figured today, I understand what the interstitial signal is. I understand that it is detecting what's inside my interstitial fluid. I understand that what's happening inside my interstitial, interstitial fluid is a concentration of how much glucose is inside my interstitial uh, fluid. I'm not a scientist, so if I'm making little mistakes, you know, but I, I think I'm getting a big overall picture. I also understand that there is a connection to what actually occurs inside your blood, how much glucose is inside your blood, there is, but the reality is that our blood sugars are fluctuating. So as far as how good that predictability is, it's gonna depend on how many things are going into it. Um, so my goal today, and I'm working on it, is to keep my calibration factor, which I still understand 5.5 is still a stable calibration factor for me. It's to keep my calibration factor as close to normal as possible. And then if I need padding, um, I'm going to have a few carbs. I want to go exercise. I did it yesterday, not in auto, just using my factor. And it went pretty well, except for all the crashing afterwards. And then I went, oh my God, that's right. That's what happens with a regular pump. So I'll have to remember that today. And now I want that padding. And now I think I want a temp, a temp basil to take me through afterwards. And I will try to do like auto, um, adding sugar tabs where I need to push up my calibration factor a little bit. And then um, maybe doing a temp basal if I really feel like it's just continuing to push down and my blood, my blood glucose is still too low to hang there. So, um, I'm still at it, but I'm going to go on and try to just live my life for today and try to do the best I can do and see what happens. Um, and what is in my mind today is the truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. And I... <laughs> Uh, and it's been a rough couple days, but maybe what's coming soon is that, you know, this is going to be okay. Um, it's still my same old diabetes and it's still my same old everything. It's just a new bit of information and trying to figure it out. Good luck to you all. <laughs>